Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. Sometimes researchers even find old ciphers in archives that we didn't know before. And in this video, I want to show you a French cipher from the late 19th century that has been recently discovered only a few years ago. The cipher's name is the Joss cipher. And in this video, I will first present the background of the JOS cipher, then how the JOS cipher works and its key space size and unicity distance, and finally, of course, we will do it in Crypt 2.2. We have an implementation of the JOS cipher and we will encrypt and decrypt using it. A few years ago, a set of historical documents from the 19th century was discovered by Jérôme Stuart and Nakache. The documents were written by Major Hippolyte Désiré Joss in probably 1885. The documents were captured in World War II, and that's really interesting, in France by Nazi Germany and sent to Berlin for crypt analysis. Then, when West Germany was occupied by the Soviet army, the documents were brought to Moscow for further analysis. And finally, the documents were brought back to France. So these documents took a really long journey until they finally came back to France. And Major Joss describes in these documents what he calls a new cipher and proposed it to the French army in this time. Some facts about Major Joss. Joss was born on July 14, 1852 in Montmartre, Seine, near Paris. He is the author of only a single book about military cryptography and published it in 1885. And he died on February 10th, 1929. And as you can see here, I unfortunately didn't find any image of Major Joss that I can show you here, so we don't have any image. If you're interested in more details on the JOS cipher and the discovery of the documents describing the cipher, I highly recommend that you read the research paper by Jérôme Stewart and David Nakash. What is the JOS cipher? First of all, we have to know that the Franco-Prussian War was from 1870 to 1871, and it was the first war in history which extensively used telegraph communication. Here on the right side, for instance, you can see a Morse key. This is an image from Wikipedia, and they used this for communication. And practically all known secret ciphers at the time could be broken if the enemy knew how they worked. By the way, I took this information from the research paper. Under Kirchhoff's impulsion, the French military thus developed new ciphers, which were secure even when attackers knew the algorithms. Unfortunately for the researchers, many of these ciphers were lost to history. Luckily for us, one of these ciphers is the Joss cipher. And the Joss cipher is an auto-key cipher with a mixed alphabet, as we will see on the next slides. Here is the description of how the JOS cipher works. First, we create a rectangle based on a keyword. As with all classical ciphers and Polybius squares and rectangles for these ciphers, we use each letter only once, and then we fill in the remaining alphabet letters. And here's an interesting thing with this cipher. The width of the rectangle is defined by the length of the keyword. For example, we want to use the, as a keyword secret key. We first write secret key in the first row. Of course, we omit double letters. So we have S, E, C, R, T, K, and Y. Then we wrap around here and go to the next row. So we only have a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we have a different keyword, this can vary. Then we write the remaining part of the alphabet below our keyword, so A, D, B, and so on, and we continue until we have filled the rectangle. And here's one hint, Joss omitted the letter W, so we have no letter W here. Then he assigned numbers to each letter. How did he do this? 
he took the first letter, the S, and said this is a one. And then he went column-wise. He went to the next letter, A, A is here, is two. Then J is here, is three. U is four. And then we go to the next column, E, D, L, V. We have E, D, L, V with five, six, seven, eight. And we continue this until we have assigned numbers to each letter of our alphabet. Keep in mind that we don't use the zero, so we start with one and we end with 25, since we omit the W. In the second step, we convert our plain text into numbers and then we compute the cipher text. How does this work? Here is an example. Our example is Hello World. We first write Hello World in the first row and since we don't have a W, we use the V two times as a replacement for the W. Then we convert all of our plain text letters to numbers using our previously created lookup table. For instance, the letter H here, 21. We search for the H, we see 21 and we write the 21. Same we do for the E, the E is 5 and then we write 0, 5. I only added the zeros so we have the same distance from each number to the next number. Then we have a set of encryption rules. For the first letter, for our first ciphertext letter, we compute it by subtracting the plain text letter 1, the digit here, 21, uh, the number here, 21, from 25. So 25 minus 21, and then we compute a modified modulo. We obtain 0, 4. What is the modification of the modulo operation, you ask now yourself. And the modification is when we compute mod 25, so we get the rest of the division here by 25, if we get a zero, instead of the zero, we use 25. Why do we do so? We do so because Joss started the numbering at one and kept numbering until 25, and if we compute 25 mod 25, we would get a zero, but we need to have the 25 to obtain the letter Q. So we have to modify our modulo operation a little. So the first ciphertext letter we computed by 25 minus 21, and this is 0, 4. So 4 is, in our case, the U. Then we have a second rule, and that rule only applies to the second plain text and ciphertext letter, and that is that the second ciphertext letter is the second plain text letter plus the first plain text letter modulo 25. Keep in mind the change modulo operation. So we have 5 plus 21, this is 26, and when we compute the modulo we get 1, and 1 in our case then is when we have a look, a look in the lookup table, one. And now we have our third rule that we apply to all the remaining letters. So the ith ciphertext letter is the ith plain text letter plus the ith minus one ciphertext letter mod 25. You can see this here. We compute our ciphertext letter here, the eight, by taking the plain text letter, the seven here, or the plain text number, and add the 1, that is the previous ciphertext number. 1 plus 7 is 8. And then 8 is, in our case, V. For the next one, we can do the same. We have 8 plus 7 is 15. So we get an N. Then we have 15 plus 19. This is 34. Mod 25 is 9. So we get C. Then we have 9 plus 8 mod 25 is 17. 17 is T. And we go on and go on and go on until we have encrypted our complete ciphertext. And the decryption process is just the inverse process. In the first step, we do the same. We compute 25 minus the ciphertext letter here. In the second rule, instead of adding, we subtract. And in the third rule, also, instead of adding, we subtract. Now let's have a look at the keyspace size and at the unicity distance. 
And we have a theoretical key space size and we have a practical key space size. The theoretical key space size for the JOST cipher for a randomly generated key is 25 factorial. Why 25 factorial? For the first position in the rectangle, we have 25 letters to choose from, for the second 24, for the third 23, and so on and so on and so on. And we have to multiply all these possibilities, and this is then in the end 25 factorial. And this is about 2 to the power of 83.7. But George Lesry showed in a recent publication about the JOS cipher and its script analysis that for every valid key there are 19 other equivalent keys. That means that the practical key space size has to be divided by 20. And this means that the practical key space size is 25 factorial divided by 20. And this is about 2 to the power of 79.4. Finally, Let's compute the unicity distance. The unicity distance is the minimum number of letters that a ciphertext has to have that we can obtain only a single valid solution. If we are below the unicity distance, so we have less ciphertext letters, that means that it, with a very, very, very high probability, we can find two different keys that both give, give us valid plain texts that we cannot distinguish from each other. So each of these plain texts would be good English. And in, the, in this case, we compute the unicity distance. We use the regular equation. It's the entropy of the key space divided by the redundancy of the language. The entropy of the key space is h to 2 to the power of 79.4. And we have to divide this by 3.2. This is the redundancy of the language. The entropy of this is just log 2. So we remove here the 2. So we have 79.4 divided by 3.2. And this is about 24.81. This means that we need a minimum of 25 letters to be sure that we obtain a valid solution when we perform cryptanalysis on the cipher. If you're interested in the details of the crypt analysis and how you can break this cipher, I highly suggest that you read George Lesry's paper Analysis of the Late 19th Century French Cipher Created by Major Joss, published in Cryptologia in 2021. Now that we know how the Joss cipher works, how we can encrypt and decrypt texts, let's encrypt and decrypt using the Joss cipher component of Cryptool 2. I'm here now in Cryptool 2 in the current nightly build, nightly build version 9458.7, and I want to show you how you can encrypt and decrypt using the JOS cipher. First, we want to create a new workspace with the graphical editor. You just click here, and we, got a, we get a new workspace. Now let's search for the JOS cipher. Here's the JOS cipher. And I want to encrypt and decrypt, so I put two times the JOS cipher on the workspace. Then we want to encrypt text, so we need a text input. This here will be our plain text. We connect the plain text and we connect the output of the first cipher with a text output. We will make these biggest width and biggest height so that they share the same width and height. This here is ciphertext. Then we want to have decrypted plain text. We connect the first JOS cipher with the ciphertext. And we connect the first JOS cipher component with the second one, because this component should decrypt. Then we connect this with the third or the second text output. Then we have a look here at the settings. This is encrypt. This is decrypt the second component. Then we need a key or a keyword. Keyword. And this is secret, oops, secret key. And we connect the key to both of our components. And the, here's the keyword. So we use this input. What the third input is, you will see in a few minutes. And we connect the keyword with a second cipher component. And then we write 
Hello world. This is a test of the new JOS cipher component of Crypture 2. And we have to write 2 as a word since we cannot encrypt or decrypt digits or numbers using the JOS cipher. Now let's press play and let's see if it works. Yeah, and here you can see it encrypts our text here. I, I think I will increase the font a little. So that you can see it a little better on the video. And then increase the size. Okay, now again, yeah, you can see here we get our ciphertext and we get our decrypted plain text. But the component offers a little more than that. So let's stop it. As I said, we have a third input here. And the third input is for an alphabet. Put this here. Alphabet. Because as you can see in our hello world example here, the W is missing because Major Joss didn't have a W in his standard alphabet, but you can provide your own alphabet. So we have now our 26 letter alphabet and we can connect it to both components. And when we now press play, we have our W in our alphabet. So you can change the alphabet as you wish. And there's a, another option that I added to the cipher that was not originally invented by Major Joss, but since I used a another cipher component to create the JOS cipher component, I thought I can also use this setting because it's quite interesting, I think, and that is a period. So you can enable a period, for instance, a period of five in the one component. And now when we encrypt and decrypt, you can see that only some parts are, or can, only some parts can be decrypted. And this is because we have now a period in the cipher. What does a period mean? A period means that the cipher encrypts a period of five, for instance, five letters, and then it starts at the beginning again. So it applies to the sixth letter, the first rule, to the seventh letter, the second rule, and so on. Now when we press play again, we should be able to encrypt and decrypt again using a period of five. Yeah, and as you can see, this works very well. Yeah, and you could now download the latest nightly build of Crypto 2 and test the JOS Cypher component on your own. And this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope that the JOS Cypher was interesting for you, that you learned something and that you can now use it by your own. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps me to grow the channel and to make Crypto 2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.